Marcy Weisler. I'm co-founder of SWSI Media, Smart Women, Smart Ideas. And two of my favorite smart women are sitting here, Abigail Posner and Rachel Prairie, to have a conversation about, it, given all the events of the last few weeks, going on months, the Me Too movement and all, um, all this harassment coming out of the closet, for lack of better terminology. And nobody has really been talking about What's the impact? Are there new ways of behavior? How should are there other ways to be looking at this? Have either of you, just in the really recent past, like in the last month, have you seen anyone you've dealt with on a regular basis acting differently, or are you thinking about things differently in terms of you know prep for meeting or what I'm going to wear? Like, does does the the overall conversation change anything for you? I work in a very progressive environment where. It, it is not acceptable for men to say things or do things that, you know, the kinds of conversations that you seem to be having sometimes. Um, I don't know what people are thinking, you know, in their heads, but whatever, you can't, you can't say those kinds of things. It doesn't mean it doesn't happen with my stage events. Um, but I would say more and more, I'm, I feel for so many of my male colleagues. I feel like they are, they really don't know what to say. They don't know how to behave. They're going to be stuck in a situation where, they may actually perform worse for themselves because they are so nervous about they're what to say. They're scared to even give you a, a compliment. Yeah, they're scared to give a compliment. Um, and, yeah. you know, does that mean I can't give a compliment? I mean, I'm, I'm used to telling men, I think you look great today. But I, I can't do that now either, right? So it's definitely made me a little bit more aware. Um, I also don't want women to feel like they have to somehow squelch their femininity and squelch their sensuality because they have they now it's being opened up that so many men have taken advantage have taken advantage of it right so now it's almost like because it's out there that it sounds like every man's a monster so many women may be going oh my gosh I probably even have to take that much more care of myself than I had to before because I know it's out there and I feel I feel sad for that I want to be able to myself and my friends to be able to relish in their femininity and in their sexuality not in a way that's overwhelming and overcomes the situation but in a way that makes everyone feel nice and confident and happy do you think that that exuding power in the workplace almost negates sexuality Actually, the opposite. I feel like one of the reasons, and I don't know if you feel this way, I think one of the reasons why men have become so uncomfortable with women's sexuality is that it's been coupled with power. So in other words, like powerful women who are also sexy is just too overwhelming for them. They can't, they can't take it. Whereas if a woman is sexy, but diminutive or, or, you know, maybe not at a, a level that is, you know, of their level, they can kind of, you know, dismiss it. But, or if somebody is... Or take power over her. Yeah, or take power over her. Or if somebody is powerful but not very attractive, there's no discomfort there. But when you have that double whammy of bright and powerful and, 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 and um, uh, uh, beautiful and sexy, as well as having gravitas, it's it's a lot to take in, but why should we, why should we squelch it just because others can't deal with it? You, you look like you were going to add some. Um, you know, I mean, it's just to the, to the point of like, sometimes it works in your favor and sometimes it, and sometimes it doesn't. And then, you know, with men, I have, I have a male friend who's an investor who's scared to interview women entrepreneurs right now and, and, and needs to bring the receptionist in almost like a nurse at a doctor's office. And yeah. I think that that's sad. You know, and I think that um, having someone else there observing can kind of can kind of prevent a sort of natural organic relationship. You can have intimacy with intimacy that's not sexual. You know, I with most of the investors that I've had, we've had an instant connection that has nothing to do with with sexuality. It's just as you would with a new friend or, or associate. Um, so I think that having you know, guards there would prevent that from happening and, and almost prevent business from flowing freely. So, uh, you know, so, so women aren't the only ones, you know, hurt, hurt in this situation. Um, and then I, you know, I, I, I was a new model for 12 years, um, mostly like erotica art photography. Um, and I was, I was in a corporate job and someone came up to me in the hallway and said, mm. 
oh, you know, I, I saw some photos of you. And, and I was like, I- I'm sorry. And he's like, you know, yeah, I, I saw some photos of you. And he was saying it in kind of a really slimy way to let me know that he sort of had something on me and that he like saw my boobs, I guess. And I was just like, oh, okay. And he's like, I saw them on the internet. And I was like, yeah, I, I put them on the internet so that people would look at them. And I just kind of stared at him and he was dumbfounded that this didn't embarrass me and that I was, I was, you know, completely cool with it. And I think it just really freaked him out. And it has not, there would have been a totally different response if I would have been like, oh my God, like really, like I'm so embarrassed. Like, I'm not quite sure why someone would want to make someone else feel that way, but that's obviously what he was going for to have power over me. So I think when, you know, just, just the fact that I owned that myself and, and I took responsibility for it and I'm in charge of my body and my life, it turned the situation into a different conversation and in fact made him feel embarrassed. And on that, can you talk a little bit about, you know, as you said, you were out there because you wanted to and it was erotica and there's a lot, you know, there's a spectrum and there's erotica and there's pornography and there's people putting things out there that you didn't consent to. Um, you know, how do you see a situation like yours empowering women today if that's what they're interested in doing? Yeah, you know, I've always loved um, nude art photography and, and you know, used to be in the circle with, with all of that. And um, I was shot by Terry Richardson. I never had an issue with him, but I know many people have. Um, but why is, you know, David LaChapelle coffee table book nudity viewed in a different way than um, ladies who dance or, um, you know, pornography or something like that. You know, it's a pretty fine line, but it's viewed in a completely different way. And I think that it's up to us as women to not judge other women and to empower all of them for whatever it is that they choose to do with their body and their life. And I think it's interesting what a different connotation and association we have between porn and erotica. Thank you, Rachel McCrary and Abigail Posner. 